It's my pleasure to introduce the speaker of the night. He's somebody that's very close to me. Known him for about 13 years now. <laughs> All his life. But um, this is my best friend, my brother, Giovanni Duble. And he's going to be delivering the message to you guys today. So I hope that you will gain the message that he's going to be saying and that the Lord will bless him and bless you all. But before he preaches, we will have the meditation by Heavenly Voices. Good night, church. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the chance to hear thy word. Please accept our worship and bless us 
we ask in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Buried treasure. Have you ever dreamed of finding a hidden treasure? Can you imagine finding hidden treasure somewhere? We read stories of individuals who find very long lost riches and dream about being the person who was so fortunate. The following story was in the news recently. A California couple spotted the edge of an old can on a path they had hiked many times before. Poking the can was the first step in uncovering a buried treasure of rare coins as the, estimated to be worth $10 million. The couple hired the coin experts to represent them. The experts remarked that since 1981, people have been coming to us with one or two coins they find which might be worth one or two thousand dollars, but this is the first time we got someone with so many buried coins. It's a million to one chance of a lifetime. Another, another treasure hunt I read. Another treasure hunt I read about started with years of research by a man named Tommy Thompson. Using the latest technology and st st statistical methods, Thompson and a team of experts began looking for the wreck of the steamship, the SS Central America which sunk off the coast of South Carolina in the 1850s and was laden with treasure when it sank. It carried so much gold that after it sank, it was nicknamed the Ship of Gold. Thompson and his team wanted to find that gold, and they used every tool out there they could find to do it. Eventually, the camera on their robot came across the telltale distinguishing sign of a steamer, a powder wheel turned on its side. They have found the wreck of the SS Central America and with its long lost treasure. One of the bars of gold weighed 80 pounds all by itself for, and was sold for $8 million. Can you imagine finding even one 80 pound bar of gold? How exciting would that be? Did you know that you have inherited a treasure that has come down from us many generations? It is too buried, not in the sea or in the earth, but is buried in a book. This book, of course, is the Bible, also known as God's Word or Holy Scriptures. It provides guidelines, have, guidelines advice, ideas, and comfort for any situa situation in life that we could encounter. It was written over a period of 1,500 years by more than 40 authors from kings to farmers. This doesn't mean that the Bible is human in origin. The Bible tells us that it's not. But what it does mean is that God chose to express himself by using human words written by human hands. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 2 Peter 1 verse 21. God influenced the hearts and the thoughts of human beings and helped them put into words what he wanted us to know. That is a treasure worth digging for. And the more you dig, the more you will find. The Bible was written in different times, during war as well as in peace, and on three different continents. Asia, Africa, and Europe, and in three different languages, Hebrew, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. The two most prolific writers in the Bible were Moses and Paul. Moses wrote the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And Paul wrote all the books from Romans to Philemon. Other prominent writers were David, who wrote most of Psalms, and Solomon, who wrote Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Songs of Solomon. Despite all this, the Bible tells us a single unfolding story of the love of God and the plan of salvation to save humans from sin. The content of the Bible has caused deaths of many people. It is important to note that people have willingly died horrible deaths rather than denounce the Bible. 
while others have died horrible deaths just to get it into other people's hands. No simple storybook could motivate that kind of commitment, which tells us there is something special about what's inside those pages. Many have tried to silence this book, but the Bible is always victorious. Jesus demonstrated his confidence and self and belief in scripture. He, when he was tempted, Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. It is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. God's word is powerful. Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the Lord, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. According to Second Timothy, verse three, sixteen, and seventeen, we see that it has a use. To instruct us in our daily lives as we learn to you as we learn to live like a life like Christ. It's our instruction manual for life and I'm glad God has given it to us. God knows it's hard to make sense of all God knows it's hard to make sense of life with all these with all its pieces, which is why he gave us a book, the Bible, that teaches, corrects, and equips us to build a righteous life. The book has shaped countless millions of lives. It is comforting to know that we have an instruction manual for life in the Bible. It gives us advice on everything you could ever need. God's word is God's word will always come through for you and help you have victory, success, and hope in every area of our life if you put its content into practice. Can we have can we expect scientific statements made in the Bible to be accurate? Yes, the Bible is true. The Holy Spirit who guided the Bible writers always speaks the truth. Here are a few Bible statements that have been confirmed by science. In Job twenty six verse seven, he hangeth upon nothing. The scientific fact is from Job, the oldest the Job, the Bible's oldest book. Number, the second one was taken from Isaiah 40, verse 22. He sitteth upon the circle of the earth. The Bible state said that earth is round centuries before man found out. And the last text is Job 28, verse 25, to make wait for the winds. Long before scientists knew, God said, air has weight. One of the greatest miracles of the Bible is its unity. Please ponder the following amazing facts. The 66 books of the Bible were written on three continents in three languages by about 40 people, kings, shepherds, scientists, attorneys, an, arm, an army general, fishermen, priests, and a physician over a period of about 1,500 years, over the most com controversial subjects, by people who in most cases have never met, by authors whose education and background vary greatly, yet though it seems totally inconvincible, the 66 books we ma maintain harmony with each other. Because of the advance in technology, the Bible is now available on the computer, the iPad, cell phone, notebook, and any and other gadgets, making it easy for everyone to access. I encourage you to read God's word in this sacred book, the Bible. Pray and ask God to guide your thoughts as you read. God's words can help you on God's words can't help you unless you apply it to your life. You may not always like what you're hearing. You're, you may not always like what you hear. It might make you uncomfortable or make you have to or make you have to change the way you do things, but it will always work for your benefit.
That was a wonderful sermon. <laughs> um, can everybody please stand for our theme song so that we can close?